watch how I upgraded the RAM on my 3134A Korean Coco 2 and added Extended Color Basic. Now I can use my Coco STC to play games. Here's a Coco 2 that I bought a while back. Uh, it worked, you know, immediately. It was one of those untested ones on eBay, but it just worked. Uh, it's never been opened, or at least if they did open it, they were able to put one of these, um, you know, warranty seals on. It's a 26-3134A, one of the Korean models. And I'll be doing some, you know, cleaning, upgrading, and stuff like that to it. Let's take a look. The other side. It has one of the nicer keyboards. And this is what the RF out looks like. It's got Color Basic 1.3. And let's see how much memory it has. Why didn't that work? Oh. Okay, and you see it has 16K. So we'll need to add extended Color Basic and upgrade the RAM. Then I'll do some cleaning and some retro brighting. Okay, so I've opened up the Coco 2, and aside from being a little dusty, it's actually very clean. It's in very good condition. It was never opened. Uh, I removed the warranty seal, and here it is actually. It's a good condition. There are the screws. I might even put it back. Now, what do I need to do on here? Well. So the first thing I want to do is upgrade the RAM. So right now, you have two uh, 4416s in here. And what that means is uh, you have a total of, so each chip will have you know, 16K, <clears throat> but four bits wide, okay? Put the two together, and so you have you know, eight bit wide, um, right? 8 bits wide and 16K of uh, total RAM. Now the upgrade for this, from what I read online, is either uh, putting in a board that fits, removing this memory, and putting in a board that fits onto these two connectors, which will have eight uh, 41, uh, 64 chips. Now what does that mean? Uh, you have 64K on each chip, but only one bit wide, so you would need eight of them. Uh, the other option is to replace these two <clears throat> with uh, 44 uh, 64s, and I happen to have several of those from my Coco 3 memory upgrade, where I upgraded it to uh, 512K. And so, let me look over here in my memory bin, and here they are, okay? So I'll be putting these in. Over here, we have a single, uh, ROM, uh, we have a 24-pin ROM, or EEPROM. Uh, this is selected by moving this jumper, okay? And we can have a 28-pin ROM on here. Um, and as you can see, it's selected for 64K now. What the 64K means, it's 64K, but 8 bits wide, so really, it's an 8 kilobyte ROM. So only enough room for color basic. I'll be replacing this, uh, you know, with a 28 pin ROM, <clears throat> which means I'll have to move this jumper over so that it would include extended color basic. Um, I still have to figure out the order in which that needs to be buried onto the ROM, um, but there's plenty of documentation online. So for now, this is what I'll be doing. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to be turning it on for the first time. And we do get a nice green screen and a prompt. So that worked. Let's see if it reports. Well, it's not going to report 64K, 
like 24 or something, but that is an indication that it was upgraded. And check it out, it still says 16K. Obviously I did something wrong. Uh, yeah, let me go look around the board because there may be a jumper I need to move. So having done a memory upgrade for another version of the Coco 2, I should have remembered that there is a jumper that needs to be soldered. And on the other Coco 2s, I've done this too, um, you have to solder a jumper between pin 16 of one of the PIAs, specifically the PIA that goes to the keyboard matrix, to I believe pin 12 of the other PIA. So, you know, we follow this line here. And here's the jumper, jumper six. And that indeed goes to pin 12 of the other PIA. So we gotta do that. All right, I've located the jumper. It's right there, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'll add some solder to the two points. Okay. And I have a piece of wire that I've pre-tinned put on there. So should be pretty easy. Well, my hands are kind of shaky because well, I don't know. That doesn't look too good. Let's add a little more. Hope they can be fast about it. Okay. So then come over and clip that off and that okay, should be Okay, now it. for the moment of truth. Nice green screen, okay. And it says 31015. It's good enough for me. I know it doesn't report the 64K, but that means that the RAM upgrade was successful. Next up, I'm gonna add extended color basic. So to upgrade the ROM on this, I'll need to swap out this ROM, which is a 16K ROM or I'm sorry, an 8K ROM or a 64K kilobit ROM, just 8 bits wide. I have to solder, remove these jumpers and solder them over to the 128K positions uh, for this to work. Now I don't have 128K ROM, I have a 256K ROM, which means there's an extra address line and that is pin one on this chip. See, it says no connection, so it's floating, which means that uh, once I burn the ROM on there, I'm going to have to do something with this leg. I'm either going to have to tie it low to ground or high to 5 volts. Okay, so I have an image that I downloaded from the Coco Discord server. This was provided by uh, RetroBard. Um, he is currently testing with this, and so I'll just use his image, which has the combined ROMs on there. So it should have extended color basic first and then color basic. Okay, so let's bring that up there. There it is. Okay, I've selected at 28 c 256 which is the chip I have in there. And this should be in my R. Yeah, it is. And where is it? And here it is. Okay. And let's program this guy. Programming failed. That's not good. Okay, I'm back and I know why that failed. I had the wrong chip selected up here. This is the I'm using the AT27256 and I had the AT28256. So that'll do it. So let's load that image again. Hmm. Oh, let's not check the ID. And let's just program it. Let's be crazy. 
It's taking a little longer. It's usually a good sign. Okay, that went well. So next step, I will switch out the jumpers, or rather move them over one, and see if it worked. Okay, first things first, I will be adding some flux and solder to the things that I want to remove. So it's going to get a little messy. All right, so now I gave myself a little bit more clearance, and so hopefully this will be easier. But it doesn't look like it's going to be, because I still really can't see what I'm doing. I'll clean that up later, but it's going to work. I thought it was going to be a neater job, but whatever. It'll work. All right, I'm going to pull out the original EEPROM. Okay, I have to be careful because it's uh, one of two chips that points to the front of the board, which I consider the bottom of the board. But all the other chips point up. This one points down, so... Okay, now remember, pin one is this one. I need to pull high or pull low, or else it won't work or it will be erratic. So after soldering these jumpers, I went back and took a look at them and they were nasty. I really had a hard time seeing them as I was soldering them. So I went and I cleaned them up. I went and I, actually these two were really bad. So I just literally, as soon as I turned the phone off and I just pressed them down, I was able to, it was really fast, same as this one. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, an AT27C256R. This is a one-time burnable ROM. And uh, like I said earlier, it's a 256 instead of 128K. So um, this extra address line, which is left floating, according to the schematic, uh, I will be setting to ground. So we won't have um, an indeterminate state. So that image is burnt on there. So um, if the image is okay and the uh, ROM is okay, it should start up. Ooh, that's not good. That does not look good. Okay, so I have to go over what I did and see what's going on. But my guess is that this ROM here is bad because I, I don't... I mean, everything else makes sense over here. Um, maybe I was just a little overly confident, thinking it would work first try. And maybe I'll do some experimenting with an EE prom that I have.
Okay, so I've uh, gone and changed this over to my EE prom, which is what I should have done the first time. And I will load the same binary on there and see if there's any difference. I've already gone ahead and selected the correct EE prom. Um, okay. Wow. No, nope, maybe I should close this. Still. What the heck happened there? AT28. Oh. Let's try that again. Pin detect error. What the heck is going on? Okay, let's see. AT28, C256. Select. Hmm. Shit looks okay to me. All right, let's try that again. Well, I don't know what that is. I guess sometimes uh, it doesn't make good contact. Anyways, it seems to have succeeded. Um, and let's try this once again. Okay, so let's see if I can get this all in one shot here. <clears throat> I'll be inserting uh, the EE prompt. Okay, I will be grounding pin one so it's not floating. And maybe you can see that there a little bit if I do this. It's pin one right there, and I've grounded it over here. Okay, and before we had the funky screen. And let's see what we get now. Okay, very nice. This worked. We have Extended Color Basic 1.1, copyright 1982 by Tandy under license from Microsoft with an OK prompt. Can't type, but whatever, it's pretty good. see if I can do this while filming. This Mylar connector is absolutely horrible. Alright, good enough. Maybe I just put in my Coco SDC from the get go here. And let's just ground it over here. See, now that it has extended color basic, I can use the Coco SDC. Woohoo! Yay! Okay. And yeah, why not Frogger? Oh, I could have got it. Well, I'd be able to, yep. Nope. Maybe. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> oh, anyways. Well, you get the picture. It uh, works. So far, everything seems to be uh, doing what it needs to do. Um, I can either buy a smaller ROM, EE ROM, or I can just solder, you know, that leg down there to ground. Either way, it'll work. Um, but yeah, this is a good, good, good test. I'm happy. Okay, so the idea here <clears throat> is to take the board out and solder a wire from this pin to somewhere, some ground somewhere on here. And that shouldn't be too hard. Because there are plenty of ground points. Well, maybe it will be a little bit hard with this thing there. Hmm. Okay, well, I think what I'm going to do is stop the video and I'll find uh, somewhere on there where I can solder this. So I've removed this annoying shield. Okay. And right here is the EE prom. Okay. <clears throat> and pin one is the floating pin. I don't know why it's floating. I, I, I don't know why they didn't just tie that to ground to make, you know, this easier for future me. But anyhow, so there it is. There are no traces. There are no traces going to it. So um, I'm just going to, I don't know, this is ground here. So I think I'm just going to go from here to there. And I think that leftover wire from before will work. Let's see. Yeah, that should work. Okay. So let's, actually, let's tin this first. Okay. And since I'm not putting the shield back on, this shouldn't bother. All right. So, oh yeah. So let's tin the end of this wire too, and then cut it down to size. Alright, so I'll just cut that right there, and since it's already tinned, I should just be able to you know, come over here and reel it on this side, okay, and then we'll come over here and solder that there. And what I usually do here is I'll cut it. I'll shape it first and then you know, I'll cut where I want it. And then I'll strip it. Again, this is really hard to do while filming. I can't see and everything's in like really tight spaces, but as you can see, it's it's where I want it. Turn this tip again, and let's tin this once again. And I'll just place it there, and and. Uh, a pull test on it, and it looks good.
I haven't even unplugged this for the power. You know, it's, it's still plugged into the mains. But for a quick test, uh, I, I took, no, it's hard to see here, but I took this connector off, so it doesn't matter. But let me wire everything in. Okay. I think it's on. Oop, unfortunately, yeah, it was on. Okay. Let me turn on the TV. And here we go. So, now, here is the 256 kilobit ROM, EEPROM. I have no wire. We've soldered it to ground. So, in theory, it should just work. And it did. Yay! That worked. Okay, I don't know why uh, the extended color basic sign didn't come up, but whatever. I'll deal with that later. But yeah, I'm happy. This works. It is assembled enough now where I can start it up. I have the Coco SDC. And I want to play just a little bit of Canyon Climber. Joystick works. So in my next video, what I plan on doing is cleaning it up and retro writing it. Yeah, well, I'm happy. It works. Um, and yeah, this is a good uh, repair slash upgrade. So yeah, next video, retro brighting.